What's poppin' YouTube? And as promised, we got another video tonight and we gotta talk about the Giants. We gotta talk about a specific Giant, like one special Giant, man. This special Giant is like the first of the Giant Pirates, man, the Captain, man, you know what I mean? Ironically, he was also the first pirate too, man, you know what I mean? He was a giant and he was a giant pirate. You know what I mean? Cause look, you see, being in them days, you probably had to ask for authorization to go on a ship to go somewhere or something like that. You know, cause if you watch like Odin's home country, that's Wano, then you see how things operate in an old fashioned way. I know a lot of people might just say, yes, yeah, because they're closed off. But nah, it's kind of old fashioned because they're still kind of sticking to the old traditions and stuff. It's just that they had been oppressed by somebody and that person was Kaido, okay? So whenever Joy Boy set sail, he was labeled as a criminal. And the name they gave to the sailors or the rogue sailors were pirates. And henceforth, the first pirate Joey Boy and the Unstoppable Giant Pirates. Now, from the looks of this Jolly Roger, we would guess that it could also be an Oni or half Oni, or maybe that flag was just dedicated to some Onis around Elbath that had something tied to the culture, the history, or the Oni being a part of an alliance with the giants or something of that nature but for now we're gonna stick to him mostly being a giant because that's what most of the context leads up to it's like blackbeard's flag we don't really know what's going on because people say it's three devil fruits it could be three personalities it could be three whatever three gods i don't know but for now, we're gonna stick to him being just purely giant or half giant, half Oni. Like Kaido, wow, Kaido's race is a Oni. That would tie into how my theory on Kaido being a D too. So he could just be Kaido. That's when he's out. I'm not even being funny, it's realistic. Kaido's coming back in the story. He's probably gonna fight one of the Gorosei. And I have like have a bunch of um polls that i put out with people that i think are gonna fight each other in one piece some of them are just like experimental but most of them are about like actual matchups that i think are gonna happen based on people that have conquerors hockey i think you need that to defeat the gorosei and then we're gonna make a theory on that too but for now we're sticking to joy boys so let's stop getting off track and head right back into the joy boy theory the joy boy pirate now the exact timeline of this date is to us unknown as it could be 700 years ago 800 years ago or 900 years ago due to us not knowing when the void century was and i have to make a theory about the void century too with that video i'm leaving that until it's explained because it's gonna take a while for them to get there or maybe not because we're in elbath but i'm not gonna touch that video for now i'm gonna just release all my other videos but the thing is it's most definitely before the war started you know what i mean it had to be before so let's say the war started absolutely a hundred years ago and it was the um hundred years from before prior to that that was the void century it makes sense that which that's how it was because they said the war started one thousand years ago and we know that due to the Shandorians starting a war 1,000 years ago when they came from the moon accordingly. So that's when the war with the D clan started. But being that I'm not here to speak specifically about the Void Century and I just realized like I might just figured it out too. So I'm just gonna go back to Joy Boy. So sometime during this ancient battle, right? 
where you had the D clan who were the natural rulers of the world. Back in the days, you had the Shandorians who had the city of gold in the sky, and they were the leaders of the sky islands along with other sky races. And you had people like the Lunarians at the top of the red line, presumably, am I right? But here it could be a little sketchy because I don't know if it was fully the red line or just like maybe like a tall structure up there that was just like a piece of a red line at the time because I'm going more for that. And I mean, but the Lunarians were at the top of the highest point known to man that was unreachable unless you had special powers like a devil fruit power. And we know other races such as the Giants, we know the Samurais, the Tantadas, people of this nature are also in alliance with the D-Clan or a part of the D-Clan by blood nature affiliation or just forming alliances. Okay, so if we're following this timeline, that means then the D clan was presumably leading for maybe a hundred years. Then they probably were the leaders for like a hundred years, and then something happened. Now, what happened? Why did the D clan fall in the ruins? And what happened? Now, this is essentially what I was saying. I probably should just make another video about the Void Century because realistically, I have to break it down in order to break down Joy's Boy's story a little bit. So ideally, we're just going to skip into the Void Century. So sometime into the Void Century, this Joy Boy that was a giant of Elbaf was born, right? And during his lifetime, the battle has already begun or it already begun before him or maybe like a century before him 50 years like whatever but it's most likely sometime above 80 years to 100 years that's what i'm gonna assume right or it could be more or less because he's a giant and you know their lifespan is a lot longer so during this time something happened now what happened well, according to the wiki, it said that there was a battle between the D-Clan and a battle between the 20 kingdoms that came together, right? And during this battle, the 20 kingdoms came together and they would go to war with the D-Clan so that they could take over and then rule and be in power after they become successful right but there's only a problem with this right the only problem is only 19 of the countries decided like yeah we're gonna really fight with these um d clan members right and then one of them which happens to be an actual d clan member themselves and that is Nefertari, the Lily of Alabasta Kingdom. So that makes sense why she would not want to be a part of the 20 kingdoms. Because low key, she is a part of the D-Clan. So she can't fight against the D-Clan. Or can she? Well, in hindsight, no. But the only way this is possible is if some type of shady deal is done behind everyone's back and no one knows. And what type of shady deal? This is if this said person that is Nefertari D. Lily agrees that if she agrees to fight with the 20 kingdoms and they do eventually win, then that does mean that they would have to make her the leader but this cannot be publicly known okay that is because she is also a member of the d-clan while simultaneously being a ruler of alabasta of one of the 20 kingdoms that form this alliance so this could probably be just Eames actual plan because it makes sense now but why is Eam so important to this plan? Well, Eam is important to the plan because of one. Eam lived 
in alabasta and what did alabasta have well alabasta had one thing alabasta had a poneglyph that led to what an ancient weapon and who could read the ancient weapons back in the ancient times the d clan members and where did this d clan member happen to be in alabasta where the poneglyph told that said person where to go and get the same ancient weapon needed to overthrow the d clan now due to them having somebody of this type of nature a giant with the gomu gomu no fruit or what's even worse only with the nika fruit because it could be that that's why oda foreshadowed this with ors it is impossible to defeat these guys plus you got giants then you got samurai, then you got Tantara, then you got all different types of species, countries aligned just with powerful individual minks. Like you got so many people just ready to fight. But you know what the difference is? 20 kingdoms is more than the kingdoms really aligned with the D clan. Because sometimes it be individual people that are D members or D clan members, better yet. So, Nefertari D Lily utilized the fact that she was a D clan member and had the knowledge to read the Poneglyph. Now, this lets me know that Joy Boy had to be born and also active before Emu and the 20 kingdoms resorted to using the ancient weapon. So that means the 100 year void was prior to 800 years ago, the, before 800 years ago to 900 years ago. So they were fighting for 100 years, I guess. It had to be something of that nature. And in that final 100 year, Emu and everybody used the ancient weapons against them because it also depended on what side Poseidon and Uranus and Pluton was on. Okay, so this is how that happened. So Joy Boy being so overpowered as a giant and having this god devil fruit, it needed somebody also with a god devil fruit that would be Emu Nefertari D. Lily with the god Tuma fruit, that is the earth god fruit, and also the use of ancient weapons and a bunch of devil fruits, broken devil fruits, such as the ones that the admirals have now, because when they die, they return to the nearby trees or fruits or whatever, vegetables, I guess. <laughs> nah, that's funny. But, um, that's really what happened. So, being that I said, man, I just had to really realize I had to talk about the Void Century to just explain the story. So, I'm just going to put both in one. So, it's like, yeah, this is dope, man. You know what I mean? Because Joy Boy has a giant. It's like, imagine how OP that is. You feel me? At first, I didn't really have all the context I needed to really speak about the ancient history, but it's 2024, and many people spoke about this before. And it's as if YouTube read my mind when I was searching for a video or just thinking about how I'm gonna figure this out. And then I was recommended to this video by Doc Sake, something, you know, the name is on the screen or whatever. But the video basically, speaks on the ancient kingdom and stuff that happened and you know all of it it's cool and it's most of the stuff in there is like a lot of the stuff makes sense he's putting a lot of things together but i only really wanted to find out one thing and that was um uh, more about the flood and the cleansing and then after watching his video I figured out how it worked and I think I figured out a timeline of the ancient kingdom, the ancient history, and the ancient war. And this is ideally how I see the war going. So Shandorians came down from the moon 
1,000 years ago, right? And people started to fight with them. Remember, they're kind of like, ah, uh, they got the wings, they're dark skinned, they look a bit different, they got the tattoos, you know what I mean? But they're guarding the gold, so it's like people are trying to take it from them as soon as they land, you know what I mean? I don't know if they brought the gold with them or whatever. But it's like, as soon as they landed, their people are trying to attack them, right? Makes it seem as if they're in control of their own shit. So most people back in that time, because it says that they went to the Blue Sea, the Jayans, they went to Jaya, and that's the Shandorians, the Sky Island people. So that obviously means that they were on the sea, the Blue Sea, you know, our level. I don't remember what the Sky Beans call it, like the sea they got a name for it but it's good to assume that most people were down at the bottom other than few sky island folks at this time when the war really began somewhere from a thousand years ago to 900 years ago anywhere from that 100 year period and that's not the void century so 1000 years ago is not the void century right it's 1000 years ago the shandorians came down right so we have to go check what the tantatas have to say and then we're gonna come back and reveal the rest of what we discovered so believe it or not we could thank the tantata for discovering this mystery mostly and not necessarily um the theorist even though he did mention the tantata so we have to give him credit you know what i mean but I'm saying, the Tantata basically detailed that there was no trace of their history before 800 years ago, like for 100 years. So that means that the Void Century was 900 years ago to 800 years ago. Now, what happened in the Void Century? Because this is what happened. Once the Void Century was over, the families of the Royal Kingdoms are the 20 original families came back to the surface. So they came back down from Mary Joel and the Red Line. And then they came back to their countries and started to rule again based on information that the Tantara gave us. And at this time it was a new king. So that means that whoever was ruling them before that for 100 years, the Tantara had records before a hundred years ago of whoever was ruling and as soon as that missing 100 year period 900 years ago it started from 900 years ago to the 800 years there was no history so what happened basically there was a um a war and like I stated before, if we were following the Shandorians, then this war started long ago, a thousand years ago. As soon as they landed, people tried to take their gold. But it's funny enough, Shandorians got attacked during the Void Century. So there has been a war going on for 100 years. This could mean that any time from a thousand years ago, right? That means that Joy Boy had to be from like a thousand years ago to 900 years ago. This is why I'm trying to say 800 years ago, like that was after the Void Century. So that means Joy Boy was already defeated 800 years ago. By 800 years ago, that was when the family that fought against the D clan family was victorious. And that's when they came back into power after 100 years of something happening. And what was that 100 years? The void 100 years? It was a cleansing, bro. And I'm gonna explain how it worked. So what I'm trying to say is before the void century, if you're following me, so let's put it on a calendar or, or like on a sheet or something. Thousand years ago, 900 years ago, 800 years ago, right? So you see this little area from 800 to 900 that's the void century you see from 900 to 1000 that's the century of war right so right around this 900 mark right here 900 year mark this is where something happened where something happened and everything changed now what happened 
Now ideally the first thing that happened is Eden will either use her fruit power to sink islands and continents and that raise the sea level a little bit or it was just purely due to ancient weapons being used simultaneously and that caused sea level to rise drastically and the red line was either created or there was an addition made or it was created slightly before or this the red line being created while countries and continents were being synced caused a major flooding because of platonics crash and continents and all that and it was as if a great big worldwide tsunami was coming to cleanse or flood most islands of the world that could not endure the massive waves and water that was gonna flood the entire land unless you were extremely high up in the air where you would be able to dodge this incoming tsunami now the cause of the tsunami is pretty simple in my idea it could just plain be like emu's fruit and i mean but i'm not gonna be one of them theorists that think i could read oda's mind no i'm gonna act like some regular person i think i'm more like i think like oda like i'll think about something that makes sense and then when people figure it out like yeah he's smart then i act stupid or i play stupid that's what oda does so basically i'm trying to see basically it could also be emu's fruit being used at the same time as the ancient weapons but i highly doubt it because we've seen this instance where the island lelouchia was destroyed as it was referred to um lelouchia was destroyed and it seemed as if this is the same way god valley was destroyed and the reason i'm bringing this up is because once lelouchia sank because that's all that happened the island that's floating on water because you know that islands float on water like some of them are but it's not really grounded all the way to the floor not all of them some of them it's just like they're floating and moving like plates you heard about this we learned this in school so it's like basically so basically i'm saying this because we seen one instance of this power being used and everybody is, is assuming that it is an ancient weapon being that it is being sold as an ancient weapon and the only way i believe lulushia actually been um wiped off the map is the use of an ancient weapon it's if a moves devil fruit is an ancient weapon itself and that might be possible but i'm not looking into that right now the thing is after she sunk lulushia like the sea level rose just from sinking one island so think about it if you sink two of them whatever it is all she got to do is sink one island and then the the sea level rises so she so let's say for this 100 year war from a thousand years ago to 900 years she's been sinking islands everywhere for everybody that tries to defect or do the same thing that the revolutionary army's doing now they're turning against the government every island that turns against the government sink 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 then the water level is gonna keep rising 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 until there is a big tsunami and everywhere they cannot stand the level is gonna get flooded so after doing this consistently all Ingwa has to do now is after sinking a certain amount of islands you know that the level is at a certain level and everywhere except the countries mentioned earlier in the video that are at a high level are gonna sink and they know this already because they probably learned something or discovered it or came up with a hypothesis or whatever and they put it in motion and they did it and it worked and you know all they have to do is sit on the red line and all they gotta do is live there 
freely. Like, they don't have to worry about anything. The only possible thing I see a problem is like food. You see now how food is being transferred up there. So that's the only thing. They could just sit there, live there for a hundred years. So my thing is, it's not a problem. Cause think about it now, I just figured it out. Food is not a problem if the water is so high that you could literally now stand on the red line and probably fish or something that's probably the only way now because the level is so close to the red line and they made sure that it was um at a certain level so the water is gonna stop at a certain level and they could get fish from it that's the only way i see so that actually makes sense though because now that i think about it that's what the great cleansing is they're gonna sink islands keep sinking islands and once they do and the sea level gets to a certain level that's good enough for them then they stop and they just retreat to the red line to marry Joa and everybody that's on the sea level other than the kingdoms built naturally to fight against stuff like this are gonna die and that's why for 100 years there was no history because the history was on top of the red line the only living human beings other than certain people allied with the D-Clan. You know what I mean? Okay, so hypothetically look at it like this. Say this Joy Boy Giant or Joy Boy the Oni now got sunk in this water, in this great flood because they can't fly. You know what I mean? Like they didn't discover what Luffy discovered with Gear for or maybe if they did they can't really do it for long. So they can't fly so Joy Boy and all everybody else that could not survive died in this great flood. And the only people that could fight against it are like people like Wano, they got Pluton as a ship. They got the Fisherman Island that's an Ark. It's built to surf on water throughout the great flood you get what it what it means and they also have the capability of fighting now because wano pluton is a ship it's an actual ship it seems like it's a submarine to me i'm gonna be honest with missiles that's what it seems like to me because you feel me that could that could maneuver through the water and it's still underneath water till this day and it's still able to move that's what i believe it is it has to be a submarine bro you know what i mean that's the only thing i could think of for now for pluton you know what i mean and the ark is built to hold the fishmen but you know they good naturally because they fishmen they gonna survive you know what i mean but what i'm saying is this is what's been going on and after Joy Boy probably got drowned because he's a devil and he ate a devil fruit so he can't survive that and everybody else that has a devil fruit is gonna die and they're not built to survive things like these the great cleansing because when a big flood comes and you have power but you can't do anything about it you're gonna get swallowed up and you're gonna die so this is what happens during the great cleansing and this is what happened 800 years ago or better yet before 800 years ago 900 years ago to be exact on the dot 900 years ago was when this actually major event took place that led to all the celestial dragons having to move to the red line until 100 years when the water settled down for some reason maybe emu broke up the red line right at reverse mountain at the other side of the world and that's how the water was able to to like um was able to break up in the different parts and also come down so now to um add more context to the story now we're gonna explain more about joy but now right so this Joy Boy specifically that we're talking about was from 800 to 900 years ago or potentially 800 to 1000 years ago because you know the giants have a long lifespan, right? So what I'm saying is there were 
more than two joy boys right so this one i'm speaking about is specifically from 800 to 1000 years ago right the giant joy boy right and that is the first pirate ever the first giant pirate ever the first giant pirate captain ever and i believe also the first known person to eat the sun god Nikafu, right so this also makes a lot of sense right as to why there was a big giant hat in Mary Jua is because after they defeated the first joy boy they took the hat as a souvenir and just kept it there right because I was wondering why do you have a hat and then the stories aren't lining up it's like they're trying to trick us but I'm going to add some content to this so everybody can understand what's really going on. And then after that, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about Joy Boy. And then we're going to talk about the Void Century a little bit more. Okay. So, so ideally based on the story, it means that there was absolutely three Joy Boys for a fact. Now, listen me out. There was a Joy Boy 800 to 1000 years ago that was a giant, 100%. And then there was a Joy Boy 200 years ago that could possibly be like one of the big mom type characters like Kaido in terms of height. And you know how you have big people in One Piece and then you have little people? Somebody of that nature could be a giant too, you know, because I was trying to like put it in panels to see if it was a giant too as well or if it was the same joy boy but that was just another joy boy what do i mean by another joy boy all right so ideally we don't know if joy boy is just the name of this guy the first pirate ever and then after that everybody just started associating joy boy with the devil fruit but we're just gonna look at it that way you feel me but the first guy we don't know his actual real name and that's why i didn't put joy d boy in my thumbnail or in the title because i don't know his real name but he was a giant and he ate the nika fruit the first ever giant captain you feel me and then there was another joy boy right and this joy boy existed 200 years ago right and how do we know this well we know this because of emmet and Emmett operates based on the sun god Nika fruit. It's like nobody's saying anything and nobody's really discovering what's going on. But that's really what happened. It's like Saturn was like, nah, this is so OP. We got to keep this. You feel me? Because he just felt like it was a just regular robot. And he's like, bro, we got Vegapunk, bro. We could just turn this into our own weapon and then flip it. And then we could fight them when they come here to try to fight us. That's what Saturn's plan was. But the problem was Saturn didn't understand that this technology from the ancient times, it works based on devil fruit fruits bro and stuff like that it works based on like fishmen like the big fishmen you know it works based on dragons works based on ships like you know what i mean but devil fruits stuff like that it's not like no new technology no it, it's the stuff that was available back then you feel me so he didn't understand that yo anytime this fruit is awakened and it's active like you see the gear fifth form that robot is gonna be active too that's ideally what it is and that's all of it all there is to it there is nothing else so saturn didn't understand that and that's how he ideally messed up with everything but this is just how it was meant to be that was destiny and i'm very serious so that's cool and it's dope you feel me because that type of hockey that he released i don't know man like who got a stronger hockey shanks roger or the first joy boy oh no nah, no nah, that couldn't be the first joy boy right that had to be like the second joy boy right i'm not even sure at this point because it could have been four five more i don't know but i know it's three for sure you feel me so like subscribe share and comment you know what i mean and then peace man you feel me